Before we start, I was just want to let you know that I'm going to record this in Facebook Live so that it's available in my Facebook page and it's only going to record me, nobody else here can be recorded. And that way, if you have any questions of something I've said, something that you want to remember, then you just you can go to the, my page, look for the Facebook Live, and you'll find the, the presentation there. So, and the, in my flyers, there's my fa Facebook page so, you, so that you have the information. So again, welcome, and thank you everybody for, for being here today. So um, what I'm going to talk uh, about is about healing uh, the past, the best, the present, and future. And uh, further on, uh, you'll understand why and how this works uh, in the measure that I'm giving my, my talk. But first, I want to start saying about family constellations and what are family constellations. Family constellations is just a tool. But it's a very powerful tool because it helps us heal issues that we have in our life that actually do not belong to us, but belong to somebody else in the family system, like our ancestors. We're carrying things from them that we're not aware of, but it limits our life. It makes us repeat patterns, either in our life or we repeat, repeat patterns from the family system that we're not aware of. And this is a tool that helps us first to be aware of these situations and where they're coming from to start healing them. And this is why it's such a powerful tool. So I want to begin uh, giving you an example, uh, like an, uh, um, a scientific experiment of epigenetics. So what they did with this experiment, and this is going to help us understand a little bit of how all this works. So what they did uh, with this experiment is that they had some, some mice, and then um, they uh, decided that they were going to give this mice uh, some smell of a flower, of a cherry blossom. And while they were smelling the cherry blossom, they would give them an, a small shock, electric shock. So um, they did it over and over again until the, the mice, just with the smell of the flower, would react as if they were getting a shock. So what's interesting about this is that then they crossed these mice. And then the, the offspring, the babies, the um, just with the smell of the flower, reacted as if they were getting an electric shock. They crossed those mice as well, and then the, again, the baby rats, the children, again, just with the smell of the flower, reacted as if they were getting a shock, electric shock, without having experiencing any electric shocks in their lives. Just because the previous generations had that trauma in their lives, just with the smell, again, of what had caused in the conscious, the trauma, the offspring and the offspring, like the grandchildren, were already triggered and responded to that, to that trauma event. And this is what's happening to us as well, but we're just not aware of it. So for example, and I'm going to give you many examples throughout the talk for you to understand, but it doesn't mean that this is the way that it happens always. We are all different, and our family system is different, we are different, the situations are different. So uh, I'm just giving this example so that it's easier to understand. So let's say that I have um, my grandmother, and that she was um, abused. So um, eventually she gets married, and she has children, and she has my mother. And my mother starts having problems with men, and she doesn't understand why. Um, she re rejects men and always has conflicts. Maybe she even has an abusive uh, relationship. Eventually, I'm born. And then, again, I want to have you know, a family. I want to be able to uh, find a loving partner. And I'm not able to find a loving partner. Each time I'm going out, I'm always finding uh, men that are mean to me, men that I don't agree of, men that are always failing on my what I want to, of what I, on a relationship, and I don't understand why. So what's happening here is just like the experiment, I'm getting the information of my grandmother. The moment that she had that trauma, she developed like this belief, like this um, understanding that men are evil. And this was something that she created in order to protect herself. It helped her deal with her situation at that point in her life. But this is a program that gets in, inherited, and then my mother has it, and then I have it as well. But that's not my reality anymore. But I'm reacting to it as if it were. 
So what happens is that I'm, I'm always finding like defects in men. I'm always ha finding the problems. I'm always finding men that are gonna hurt me. I'm always finding these situations that are gonna connect to what happened to my grandmother. And again, this is a program that gets passed from generation to generation to protect us, to help us, to give us information about the world. But it limits me because I'm not able to find a loving partner and I wanna have a loving pa partner. So then uh, what we do in, in Family Constellations is that we're able to see this connection, to see that the, the reason why we're having these problems is that because we have a connection to our grandmother that had trauma in her life uh, in this aspect, uh, and we honor and respect that. And at the same time, we decide that that's not gonna be our program anymore. And we make the decision, and this is why we are in charge of our own healing, because we say, I honor and respect what happened in your life, but I'm not gonna carry that belief anymore. Men are not evil, men are not bad, men are not terrible. They can be wonderful, generous, they can be strong and, uh, and kind and, 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 and amazing, and, and this is my new program, this is what I wanna find. And, uh, and I honor what happened in your life, and, uh, and I respect whatever happened. But now this is my reality, and this is the reality that I choose. And when we're able to do that, we're able to heal what the previous generations were not able to do. We're able to heal our life as well, but we're, because we're able to change that energy, that pattern, that situation that's limiting us. And we're also able to heal that for our children, because when we have children, they're not gonna carry anymore, because I already made this shift. I already had this healing. I already decided that I'm not gonna have this kind of life anymore, and I'm gonna have the, the, the life that I want. So this is why we say that with Family Constellations, we heal the past, the present, and future, because we heal what our ancestors were not able to do, what we have in our lives, because they were not able to finish or, or bring peace to or, or deal with in one way or another. We're healing the present because we're healing our lives, and we're also healing the future because we're healing the, the, the next generations. So, um, so with Family Constellations, we're able to, to see all this. And this is just one example of how, how this happens, but I'm gonna give you more examples. Um, the um, Family Constellations has been developed uh, mostly by Bert Hellinger, and he describes certain orders of love in the systems, in the family systems. And the most uh, important one, one of the most important ones, is the order of belonging. This means that everybody in the family system belongs. It doesn't matter what they have done, it doesn't matter how they were with the family, with somebody else, everybody belongs. And everybody belongs from the moment of conception till the moment that they, they pass away. Um, and I say this, since that belong from the moment of conception because miscarriages and abortions also form part of the family system. And it's important to honor them and to respect them and to remember them. And when they're not, then it's like they're excluded because they're not considered part of the family system. So um, when someone is excluded from the family system, there's like a void, there's like an empty space and somehow a new member of the family system when this new member is born, is gonna have a go to that like emptiness. It's gonna have like this connection with this person that's being excluded. And by having this connection, it's like a bond. And uh, this person is gonna start having the same characteristics, the same problems, the same challenges as the person that was excluded. So for example, maybe I have an, an uncle and then he um, was, gave the family a lot of problems, maybe, uh, stole the money of the family, maybe he was an alcoholic and hurt others of the family, so nobody wants to talk about him. And uh, no, he's not even in the pictures of, you know, you go to the houses and he's not even in the pictures, and sometimes you say, but didn't you have like a, a brother or something? I kind of remember there's a brother, and you know, nobody wants to talk about it. It's like, shh, no, don't mention his name. And then, uh, so this person has been excluded from the family system. So a new person, maybe the moment that I was born, there was already this exclusion, so I make this bond with the family member that was excluded. So I start having problems with addictions. I start having problems with money. I, have start, I start having problems with relationships, with being able to have good relationships. And, um, and I don't know why. And no matter what I do, I'm always follow, you know, falling on the same pattern. I try to heal these addictions, but I'm always you know, falling again in the addictions. 
And this is why these issues are so difficult to heal because, you know, in this example, they don't belong to me. They're not even mine. They actually belong to this person that's being excluded from the family system. But my unconscious love for the family system, uh, in a way, is saying, you know, somebody with these characteristics is missing from the family system. And by me being part of the family with these characteristics, it's like I'm honoring and I'm bringing back this person that has been excluded. And this goes back to the time, you know, that we used to live in a clan, in a cave. Uh, exclusion meant death. And this is why for us it's so important to belong, because we're still wired that way. In a deep, you know, in a deep level, exclusion for us means that we are threatened, that not, we're not going to be able to survive. So we do everything we can to belong. And children uh, do not survive without the, the family system. So they're going to be open to heal anything that's necessary uh, to be able to belong for the family system. So, um, so this, in this example that I was telling you about the exclusion of the uncle, of, of, uh, that the, the uncle, nobody wants to talk about him, um, this is an extreme example. And, um, but we exclude every single day. And the way we exclude is when we judge or when we criticize. So if we think of our family system, we belong in our family system, our children, but our siblings, our parents, the ex-partners as well, and the siblings, grandparents, their ex-partners and siblings, and all the way back. Uh, what we have in our lives comes more or less from for three to four generations back, but if there has been a crime or a tragic death, it can come from more generations. So if you think of everybody that belongs in the family system and how many people have been judged or criticized, we know that this is big, that we can have a lot of entanglements, that many things of our lives can be uh, affected by all the exclusions of our ancestors, uh, that they have not been, um, that they have been criticized or judged, or that they have been completely excluded from the family, that they have not belonged. So, um, so this is a way that we make these bonds and these exclusions and, and the effects that have in our lives. So anything that the person that was excluded, any challenges that they had, we may have as well. So we may have challenges with money, we may have challenges with relationships, we may have health issues, either physical or, or mental, we may have uh, problems with money, problems with our children, problems with many kinds of issues, and all these can be related with these bonds that we do with family, uh, with people from our family system. So that's the first order of love, and that's the order of uh, belonging. Then we also have the order of um, the hierarchy, of when we come in, in the family system. So as I was saying, that um, miscarriages and abortions also form part of the family. So let's say that I have a, um, that my mother had a miscarriage before I was born. Um, and the problem with miscarriages and abortions is that we don't know how to deal with them. If we have a uh, miscarriage and, and the baby is eight months uh, already, you know, uh, advanced, it's, it's like nothing happens. If the baby is born and then dies one week later, we have a funeral, we have a whole process of how to deal with the situation. But if the baby dies before being born, it's like, we don't know what to do, we don't know how to process this, and, it, and it's a death, it's, it's, it's a grieving process, and then because we don't know how to deal with it, because we're not used to dealing with this in the society, then it's, it's, um, it's something that um, it's, it's kept within us. So it's like a trauma, a, a grieving process that we're not able to express. So it becomes like an exclusion, because that member is not considered as part of the family. So let's say that my mother had a miscarriage before I was born and then I was born, and I'm the first one. I'm really not the first one. The number, the, the position of when I was born in the family is very important, and I am not the first one, I'm actually the second one. So if I'm considered as the first one in the family, I'm not in my place. I'm not in the place where I belong. So I'm in the place of somebody that was not able to live, so I'm gonna start having problems, like an attraction toward, toward death in the sense that I'm not going to be able to be in life because I'm in the position of somebody that was not able to live. 
So when I'm in, that, in this position, then I have problems with, uh, maybe I have a depression, maybe I have failures, maybe I have illnesses, all kinds of problems. And that's because I'm in the position of somebody that's not uh, alive and that I'm not, I don't have the strength of life. So um, another thing that can happen is that I don't feel comfortable, you know. I'm always looking for something else. I'm not comfortable at work. I'm not comf comfortable where I'm, I'm living. I'm, I'm always looking for something. And it's because I'm not in my place, in the position in the family. So I'm never going to be comfortable anywhere I go because I, I always feel out of place. So, um, so these are other disorders that we can have in the family system. And it's not only in this sense that we are not in our position, but also uh, like a little bit like understanding the roles that we have. Uh, we are children of our parents, and we are parents of our children. So if we um, step into the position of being our parents' parents, and start telling them what to do, how they should react to things, how should they should behave, what they should do with their money, that they should go to the doctor, that why they want to go to the doctor, that we told them so many times that this is a problem. And so we're starting to behave as their parents. We're not in our position. And then that, that also has problems systemically. And we usually step into the position of our grandparents because they are not available for one reason or another. So maybe when my mother is born, uh, my grandmother is not available. Maybe she's not alive, maybe she dies when uh, my mother is born, maybe she has other things going around and she's not available for my mother. So my mother is, doesn't have this love of a mother the way she wants to. So then in the moment that I'm born, like I said, we have this incredible love for the ones that came before us, this unconditional love. So then I, know, I, I feel this necessity of her of getting the love of a mother and then I, without knowing this, I say, I'll give you this love of a mother, I'll be your mother. But that's not my position. So then I'm going to have uh, problems in my life because I'm not in the position. And one of the problems that I can have is that in the moment that I want to have children, I, I'm not able to have children because systemically I already have children. My mother is my, ch my child. So um, another situation when I could not be in my position is that I could be uh, as I said, ex-partners are also part of the family system. They have to be honored and respected, and they have to be thanked that they left the relationship so that the new partner can, can, can have a relationship. So maybe um, I'm, this has not happened, and I'm in the position of my father's ex-girlfriend. So then I have like an energetic connection with him, and this um, is going to... And sometimes we can see that there are relationships of fathers and daughters or mothers and, and sons that, that is really, really tight. That it, like it, the son sometimes is like the, the one in charge of the family, like if he was the, the husband of the mother. And uh, as well that the daughter, you know, is, is uh, daddy's little girl and will always be daddy's little girl. And that, you know, everything has to do be about her. And, then, and she starts being like in competition with the mother for the father's love. This often happens when we are in the position of the ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend of, of the parents. So, uh, and again, this has uh, problems uh, for me in my life, if I'm in this position. Uh, for example, I may have, when the moment that I grow up and I'm looking for a partner, I'm not available, my energy is not available to, to, to find a lasting partner because I'm connected with my father. I have left that in me. You know, I'm not open completely to have a long-lasting relationship because I'm still connected with my with my father. So then the, this guy has uh, problems for the relationship that I want to have. So that's another issue that we can have, that we have this uh, connections with ancestors that uh, come from not being in the place where we belong, in the hierarchy, in the moment that we uh, enter in the family system. We have a position, and that position is very important. So this is the second order of love. The first one is the order of the belonging, and the second one is the order of the hierarchy of where, where we belong in the family system. And the third order is the order of giving and receiving. And this is very important. Um, it's important to have always a balance of giving and receiving uh, in every relationship that we have. The only relationship that this is not going to be in balance is with our parents because they gave us our life, and there's nothing more precious uh, to us than life. 
So we're not going to be able to give that to, back to them. So what happens here is that we take from our parents and then we give to our children. And when we don't have children, uh, what we can do to give back is that we usually have a project uh, that gives back to others. We help others. And this way we give back this depth that we have of life that our parents gave to us. But in every other relationship, it's important for us to, to have this balance. So for example, in, in relationships with partners, um, this balance is important. And it doesn't mean that you have to have a book and that you have to you know, write, you know, I, I did the laundry, so tomorrow is your turn. And then I cooked, you know, so tomorrow is your turn. It's not that specific, but it's just a general feeling. And sometimes, I don't know, if you've known about a relationship, of someone that gives a lot to the other person, it gives more and more and more and more. And what uh, usually happens is that the person that's receiving uh, more is the one that leaves the relationship. And then often people say, you know, how ungrateful, how after receiving so much, he or she leaves the other person. So what happened here is that this was out of balance. So the person that was giving um, a lot to the other one um, gave too much, and the one that was receiving was not able to give back on the same amount. So it starts leaving the relationship with a lot of guilt of not being able to give back. And then the person that's giving more enters a position of being able to manipulate the other one because the other one is in debt, because the other one is giving more. But then this is, doesn't have strength in the relationship. So the one that's receiving and cannot give back on the same amount would rather leave the relationship that keep on leaving that, re that relationship with that guilt of not being able to give back. So it's very important for us to notice this, uh, the, this balance in every single relationship. It happens with friendships as well. And if we are giving more, then we have to be responsible to give only as much as the other person can give back. And when someone's giving to us, then uh, you know, notice these relationships because this is important to keep the strength in every relationship. And it happens as well with work. And we can easily notice this, you know, if we, we work, we give a service, uh, that's our work, and we receive money for the service. So it's a giving and receiving uh, balance. When we are working a lot and we're not receiving enough money, what happens is that we feel exhausted. We don't want to continue there. We look for another job because that, the balance is not there. We lose our strength. So when we are um, on the opposite, and uh, for example, we're receiving a lot of money and not working uh, a lot, uh, what tends to happen is that money disappears. It kind of like flows away. Um, and there's, uh, there's been studies of people that have won the, the lottery, and they've seen this several, several years after winning the lottery, they have lost all the money. And this is because there's this balance that's uh, out of balance in a way, the giving and receiving, that they, for what they gave, they re received a lot more. So this is the, the third order of love, the order of um, balance and receiving. And again, this is another reason that we can have entanglements in the family system. And these entanglements are like these bonds that I was telling you about that uh, create situations in our life that are similar to the other um, people in our family system. And then we feel blocked, we feel stuck, we feel that we're not able to, to move forward because of these uh, situations. But another thing that we also carry from our ancestors or from others in the, in the family system is um, emotions. So when our ancestors have not been able to deal with their emotions, usually the descendants carry uh, the emotions for them. So when there has been, for example, a tragic death and they were not able to deal with that, then the grief uh, gets passed on from uh, generation to generation. And we can have grief from our ancestors, we can have fear from our ancestors, we can have anxiety, we can have uh, many emotions that they were not able to deal with. And emotions are very important in our life. Emotions, um, they're not... Uh, they're not bad. I know we, we say, you know, fear and anxiety and uh, you know, all these kinds of emotions that are uncomfortable, we call them as bad. But all emotions exist because they're helping us deal with situations that we are in our lives. And for example, if we're in a dark alley and we start feeling fear, the fear is not the enemy. 
the fear is there to protect us. The fear is telling us, go to a place where there's more light. Go to a place where there's more people so that you're safe. And once we move to this situation when we feel safe, we're not afraid anymore. But the fear is not our enemy. The fear was not the one that was putting us in danger or was gonna hurt us. It was protecting us. So what happens is that if we are then at home and we feel completely safe and we start feeling a lot of fear, and we don't know why, it usually belongs to somebody else in the family system. So, um, what happens, and, and that's been shifting, and I'm so happy that this, I've seen this shift happen, that now people are starting to learn to deal with their emotions, and this is very important. Um, and I see it in the children, and in how uh, people are starting to treat, parents are starting to treat children, is that uh, they're allowing them to feel their emotions instead of rejecting them. But I still grew up in a generation where how often I heard, you know, don't cry, don't be angry, uh, don't feel. And we're pro the problem is that the, we don't, we close ourselves to these emotions, but what we're doing then is that it's just like we're swallowing them, it's like we're keeping them here. And then, um, but they need to, to come out somehow. And when we're not dealing with our emotions, they come out as illnesses. And then if we're not able to deal with them at some point, then our descendants will carry them as well, and they'll have to deal with them. And another problem is that emotions are come all together. So if I'm enclosing myself to the difficult emotions, um, to the fear, to the anxiety, to the sadness, to the grief, to all these emotions that I'm uncomfortable feeling, it's like I close myself to all emotions. So I'm closing myself as well to, to experience joy, to experience happiness, to experience uh, beauty, love, bliss. So um, in order to be able to experience all this, I have to experience all the other emotions because they all come together. And if I'm closing myself to some, I close myself to all of them. It's like a package that comes together. So, um, so this is very important as well. And this is, uh, again, something else that we're also carrying from our ancestors. Another uh, bond, another connection, another situation that, that we feel that, that we realize that, that we're stuck. Um, and we realize uh, that emotions come in waves. Um, if we're dealing in a in difficult situation, we notice the emotion arises and then it kind of leaves. And if it's a di difficult situation that's very hard, uh, hard to deal with, then it will come and then leave and then come and then leave. But if the emotion is suddenly way out of, uh, control in a way, it's more than what the situation is. Again, that is an, a way that you can identify that that emotion does not belong to you, but you're carrying it from an, somebody else in the family system. Uh, and the, the important part is again, to, to, to deal with those emotions, to, to accept those emotions, to, to, to sit with the sadness and just breathe and just be there without trying to fix it, without trying to, to reject it. And then when we're able to do this, we're able to do what our ancestors were not able to do with the emotions. And then we're able to heal. And when we're able to heal, it's like we heal what they were not able to do. So again, we're healing it for ourselves. We're healing it for them because we're healing what they were not able to do. And again, we heal it for our children, our nieces, our nephews, because they will not carry that as well. And, uh, and this is another thing that we can work with family constellations when we feel that we're stuck in an emotion to see where is it coming from. And the um, important part, uh, that the most uh, important foundation in the family constellations that brings the most healing is the part of acceptance. So um, when we work with acceptance, it's working with an understanding that everybody is the way they are because that's the way they need to be. And that way, they're perfect. We are born with all these entanglements that we have in the family system, with all these bonds. And it's like we're born with a backpack full of rocks. And each backpack is different. We don't have the same backpacks. Some people have huge backpacks with a lot of rocks. Some people have less rocks. And we have our own backpack with our rocks. And in the measure that we uh, live our lives, we are able to start healing and start taking out some rocks of the backpack. And then some other rocks, we're not able to take them out, but 
in the measure that we're able to accept this as part of our life, it's like we become stronger. So then these rocks that we have in our backpack are not as heavy as anymore. And we just do the best we can with this backpack of rocks. And then we're able to connect ourselves with life. So when we're working with acceptance, we know that everybody is the way they are because they, everybody has their own backpacks of rocks. And some people have huge backpacks. And they're doing the best they can with the tools that they have, with the information that they have, with how they live their lives, what they learn, how was uh, their, uh, you know, their, um, their childhood, what did they learn, what did they learn from the people that were surrounding them, and what were the tools that they were finding on as they were growing up, or lack of tools to deal with difficult situations. They're just repeating what they learned how to do. And another thing is that everybody is in our lives for a reason for something that we need to learn. When we want somebody to be different, is because you know we want them to be different and we want them to be the way we want them to be. But who are we to decide what's the best for them? Who are we to decide what's the best for us? Maybe by having a diffi this difficult person in my life, I'm gonna be able to learn something from my life. I'm gonna be able to change something. I'm gonna be able to see something. So we cannot um, be wanting for everybody else to change. We can only change ourselves. So it's like we have our eyes looking at everyone. We need to change the eyes and look at ourselves and, and change ourselves to do the best that we can. So with this acceptance, we accept everybody the way they are. And this does not mean that if somebody is hurting us, that we're going to allow for them to hurt us. We always need to protect ourselves. We always need to put our limits. And if this mean, means to put some distance from, some, from someone, that's okay. But we're gonna do it without judgment. We're gonna do it without criticism. Because we understand that that's the way that person needs to be. We're not gonna try to change that person, but we are gonna change ourselves, our attitude, our relationship. And if that means, you know, being apart from this person, then that's what we're gonna do, but we're gonna stop trying to change those persons that are in our lives, that we don't like the way they are. We're gonna accept them just the way they are. And the most important part of this is to accept our parents just the way they are, just the way they were, because they gave us our life. So there's nothing more precious to us than life. And by, um, having this acceptance, it's like we have this connection uh, to life when we accept them just the way they are. And when we are criticizing them, rejecting them, we wanted them to give us more, to give us less, to be more present, to be less present, whatever we want them to be different. It's like we are um, blocking this energy of life that we receive from them. So if we're blocking the energy of life, it's like we're blocking life and then we're not connected with life. And if we're not connected with life, we cannot be connected with abundance, with love, with success, with health, with everything that life gives to us. But if we're able to accept our parents, if we're able to say thank you, thank you for the life that you gave me. What you gave me was enough. If you're really able to say that to your parents, if you're able to say, if I had to choose New parents, I would choose you again, no matter how the relationship was. This is what brings the deepest healing because this is where you're able to accept them. This is where you're able to connect with life because they represent life. And it's important to accept ourselves as well because we are also life. Accept ourselves the way we are. Accept our, ourselves with our imperfections and know that that's how we are perfect. That's the way we need to be. Stop trying to, to, to be different people that we're not. And then again, this is the connection with life. And when, when we're able to accept everyone, especially our parents, the difficult people that are in our lives, when we're able to accept our, ourselves as well, we have this connection with life. And then life gives back to us. And life gives back to us with abundance, with health, with success. When we're able to accept our mother, we're able to have physical health, we're able to have success. When we're able to have, uh, accept our father, we're able to have success in the area of life that we wanna have success in. We're able to have strength, we're able to have mental health. 
So, um, so this is one of the pillars that we've noticed in, in family constellations that brings the deepest healing, the work with acceptance. And, um, and another aspect of the healing is work with uh, our responsibility. To know that we are responsible for the life that we have right now. Even though we might have all these entanglements, maybe I have an entanglement with someone in the past that committed a crime, and then we have this like aggression and necessity of hurting others. However, we're always 100% capable of deciding whether or not to, to hurt somebody else, to do something or not. And because we're always able to, to decide, that makes us 100% responsible for the hurt that we do, for the things that we have, or what we don't have. So we're, we know that we are 100% responsible for the life that we have. So um, it is our choice on what we're gonna do with this. So we can work with uh, realizing that, um, that we have this uh, situation, we have these difficult situations in our life, because we'll always have challenges. The, because through the challenges, through the conflicts, through the problems, is how we learn, is how we grow, is how we expand, is how we become more aware, is how we, ra we, we uh, rise our vibration. So through these problems is how we're able to, to, to really uh, uh, get to a deeper level of understanding. So we'll always have problems, but we can either be connected with life and say, I have this problem, then I'm going to see how, how I'm able to, de to fix it, to deal with it, to accept it, to, uh, you know, I'm going to do this, and if this doesn't work, then I'm going to do this, and if this doesn't work, I'm still going to be able to uh, enjoy life, even with this situation in my, my life. I'm going to do the best I can and still enjoy what I have. Because what I have is the, only, the present moment, the way your life is right now, is the only thing that exists. The past doesn't exist anymore, and the future doesn't exist either. We only have this present moment. So it's our responsibility to decide to be happy right here, right now, in every single moment of your lives, because it's the only moment that exists. If you're waiting for something else that doesn't exist, you'll wait forever. And once you, you, you say, maybe I'm, I'm going to ha be happy once I buy a house, once I find a partner, once I get this job. And then you get there, you realize that you're not happy, and then you're looking for something else, you're looking for something else. And life, you know, you know life goes on. <laughs> and you realize that you've lost so many opportunities to be happy because you've been waiting for something in the future that just never arrives. Because it only arrives when you make the decision to be happy and, and to enjoy the moment that you have right now. So this is the connection with life. To accept, to accept everybody the way they are, to accept our parents the way they are, to accept ourselves, to be responsible for our lives, to, to accept uh, the challenges, the problems, and do the best we can, and even though we have those situations, to decide to, to be happy and, and to enjoy what we have. And in the, others, in, the, in the other way, if we have problems and then we um, start uh, trying to avoid them, try to re reject them, trying to uh, blame this on everybody else, this is not our fault, this is somebody else's fault, you know, life is terrible, and we fall into this victim um, mentality of, you know, thinking everything is terrible, everything happens to me, oh, poor me, and you blame everything in, in somebody else, and you're not in life. You are, you're like in, in death, and sometimes we are like that, because we have entanglements in the family system, uh, with others that were in that situation. And then, um, and this is why it's so difficult to then be connected again with life. But we are able to do it. You know, from family constellations, like I say, is such a powerful tool because we're able to heal these issues, but it hasn't uh, existed always. This is something that really helps us do it in a very uh, faster way, but we're able to do it every single day in our lives when we make this decision when we make this decision to do the best we can, to be responsible for our lives, to accept everyone, to let go of judgment and criticism of everyone, including ourselves. And when I was saying, uh, for example, that you have this um, difficult people in your lives, um, they're showing us things. They're either showing us something that we need to learn, something that we need to change, something that we need to see in ourselves, 
or maybe they're showing us someone in the family system that had those issues as well, that we need to honor and we need to respect. So when we have challenges or difficult people in our lives, it's important to say thank you because they are actually connecting us with life. They're giving us opportunities to heal. They're giving us opportunities uh, for our family system to heal. So once we understand this, we are able to make the decision. So in the example that I said in the beginning of my grandmother that, um, that maybe she was you know, abused and then uh, my mother and I have this uh, uh, programs in a way that men are evil. When I'm able to say no, I choose to change that view. I choose to, to believe that men are wonderful, that men can be amazing, that men can be uh, generous, that the kind, loving, and uh, I change. I change that program and then I make this shift and I can make this with every single thing in my life. So then, um, so this is the most important part. This connection, connection with life, connection with our parents, connection with the present moment, with being responsible for our lives. And once we're able to, to, to we realize that we're able to do that, it's just the, 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 the decision, the commitment of making that decision and going on every day of our lives, doing the best with, we can, but enjoying as well the moment. Like I said, we'll always have different kind of problems in our lives, but no matter what's going on, we can almost always enjoy the flowers that are in the highway when, you know, in spring. These days you can go around and, you know, there are flowers everywhere and then you can see the blue sky, you can see all the rainbows with all the rain that we've had all these years, all these months or these uh, weeks. Um, you can uh, look at someone and see a smile and enjoy that smile. So when you're able to connect with all these little things and enjoy them, instead of getting yourself drowned in the whole problem and actually looking at the problems as opportunities to heal, opportunities to grow, opportunities to get to a deeper understanding of something in your life. Often you're not gonna be able to know what is it that you need to understand, but just by being open to it, you're already connecting to this healing. And things will start to shift. So uh, with family constellations, uh, what we're doing is that we're looking for the situations in our lives that where we feel stuck, where we feel that we're in a pattern, where we feel not move, that we're not moving forward uh, in a pattern in our lives or maybe in a pattern in the family. And what we do in the family constellation is that we look who are we being connected to. And we honor and respect those that we're, uh, we're connected to. We honor and respect what happened in their lives. But we also say, um, anything that I'm carrying from you, I live with you and I keep with myself only what belongs to me. And then I go on with the situation that I have, doing the best I can. But once I'm able to realize who am I doing this from, I don't have that entanglement anymore. I'm already free to have the life that I want. But it's important uh, to, to be able to see this entanglement because it's going to help us not feel so stuck in that area anymore and be, we're still responsible. Often I have people that come to me because they don't have a partner in their lives. And after we do the constellation, maybe we found out that they're being entangled with an aunt that was not able to get married because she had to take care of their parents. Um, I always say, you know, nobody's gonna magically appear sitting next to you uh, now that we did this constellation. You still need to go out there and meet people and you know, maybe the first person that you meet is not gonna be, it's not gonna be the perfect one. You need to, and there is no perfect one to start with, but uh, you need to go out there and meet people. And uh, the same, you know, is some people come because they want to get a, a, a better job and we do constellations and we realize that they've been entangled with a grandfather that uh, had, um, uh, you know, maybe their grandfather had a business where people were not being treated well, so then this person is carrying like atoning for the, for the grandfather by having problems in, in, in his or her work. But once we are healing that, we still need to do a good work in order to get a, a you know, a better position or a better job, or we still need to apply to other other companies in order to to change work. We still have our responsibility for our life. But when we are stuck because of an entanglement, it's going to be very hard to get out of that situation. And this is why the family constellations is so so powerful because it helps us heal those aspects in our lives. 
so um, what I um, wanted to do is that uh, we're going to do a small meditation. And after doing the meditation, we are going to do questions and comments. So, um, yeah. So, for the meditation, just make sure that you have both feet on the ground. <laughs> 